Hey, hey, hi, hi, hi. We are open tonight for fun, and we are so glad to see you here. Welcome to I Know, I Know, a solo Beatles podcast where we talk about the four careers of each of the Beatles. Um, today, I am joined by a guest host who we will be going through our favorite solo songs by each of the Beatles. First of all, I do want to quickly mention that the Plastic Ono Band box set is coming out on April 16th. You are able to order the big box with the six CDs and two Blu-rays, um, the two CD set, the two LP set, and then the one CD and one vinyl. And that also includes Yoko Ono's outtakes. And I do want to quickly mention that we are only nine days away from Ringo's new EP, Zoom In, coming out, which the single Here's to the Nights was released. So, let's get started by introducing our guest. Our guest today is none other than my grandfather, John Stanley. How did you discover the Beatles, and how did you become a fan? Uh, this was uh, back in the early 60s. I had two uh, teenage sisters that were really into the Beatles, and they were Beatle crazy, of course, dancing around the house, singing their songs, playing the music loud, and it kind of rubbed off on me, and I started actually liking them too, even though I was a number of years younger than them at that point. But the Beatles stuck with me all these years. And uh, they're a great group. And who is your favorite Beatle? My favorite Beatle is uh, Ringo Starr, of course. And the reason being is uh, he's uh, one of the greatest uh, drum players of all time. And I've always liked the drums. I always liked the beat. I've always wanted to learn to play the drums, but I never got to that point. <laughs> So anyway, it's Ringo Starr. Yeah, mine's John for the personality because he's got the, you know, he didn't care what other people think. And if he had lived, who knew what he had, had done? That's very true. Yeah. So we are going to each list our fa three, three favorite solo songs by each of the Beatles. The only thing that's different from our list is that John is doing specifically Wings songs, and I am doing Paul solo songs that are not part of the Wings era. So, to start off, what are yours for John? Uh, whatever uh, gets you through the night is one of my favorites. And Imagine, and Just Like Starting Over. All wonderful picks from Walls and Bridges, whatever gets you through the night. The uh, only number one hit that he had when he was still alive. Imagine is his most well-known solo song, you could say. Might be the most well-known solo Beatles track ever. And uh, Just Like Starting Over was his big hit for Double Fantasy. Um, so my three favorites... First of all, we start off with, at number three from the Mind Games album, underrated album. You know, it's my second favorite John album from my episode on it. And I go with I Know I Know, the name of the show. Um, I've always loved the song, the production on that song. Even though the production isn't great on that entire album, I've always loved it. Um, it's just a great song, and I've always really enjoyed it. Um, and then from Plastic Ono Band at number two, I have Love, which is just a beautiful piano song. Um, I've loved that song since the first time I've heard it. I heard Plastic Ono Band for the first time on headphones when I was about 10 years old. And that album completely blew me away. Um, that's another story for a different day. And at number one, this is possibly the most Beatlesque John Lennon song. It's kind of a secret, like a follow up to the song "Girl" from Rubber Soul. I have the track "Woman" from Double Fantasy, which was also a hit single. 
Um, I've always loved that song. In the past couple weeks, that's just been the John song that I keep coming back to time after time. So those are my picks for John. So next we navigate to Paul. And so, John, what are your favorite Paul and Wings songs? Uh, favorite Paul songs are uh, With a Little Luck, Jet. And Band on the Run. All great choices. Um, With a Little Luck was the uh, number one hit from London Town, and Jet and Band on the Run were also hits with um, the Band on the Run album. So, navigating to my Paul solo songs, um, I just did solo Strictly. He um, act just did Wings to kind of make it a little different because Paul in Wings is like a different era, I think, but they do go together. There's just so many good songs. So at number three, and this is most people's number one, I went with this song, Maybe I'm Amazed, the absolute classic from Paul's debut McCartney album. Um, I think it's the best song on there by a milestone, and it is a beautiful ballad. Um, I wonder if... On Wings Greatest, I wonder why they didn't put the live version that was a hit single from uh, Wings Over America, which I think would have been great. And I just don't know why Maybe I'm Amazed wasn't a single. It was the only song that got praised from the McCartney album initially. That album's gone up in stature, as we know, with some fans. Me, not so much. But at number three of Maybe I'm Amazed. At number two, we have a wonderful song from my favorite Paul McCartney album, Flaming Pie from 1997, the last album with Linda alive and helping him. And we have the song Beautiful Night, which actually has Ringo drumming and singing background vocals in the back. Just a really great song. I can't get enough of that song. Um, perfect song. I, I can't say enough about it. And my number one pick... I have the single that never was, Ballroom Dancing from the Tug of War album. Um, I, th I think it was released at the single, but it was the third or fourth single on the album. Tug of War, as much as I love the title track on that album, it is not single. I don't think it's a single. It just doesn't fit the bill for a single. But Ballroom Dancing could have been a huge hit if it was released as the first single. So, that are our Paul picks. Now we go to the quiet and underrated Beatle, George. So, John, what are your three favorite George songs? Uh, to begin with, uh, Give Me Love, Give Me Peace on Earth is a very good song. Uh, My Sweet Lord, and While My Guitar Gently Weeps. Awesome choices. And that, I'm going to guess, is the live from Bangladesh version, which I think is a great song. Um, personally, I agree with them. Give Me Love from the uh, often underrated these days, Living in the Material World album. Um, My Sweet Lord from the All Things Must Pass, the first number one hit by any of the solo Beatles. You know, well, my guitar gently weeps from the White Album, but George did it, do it in a solo career, so that does count as a solo pick in my books. So my three favorites, I kind of went with the obscure side of George. So first of all, at number three, I have the song Beautiful Girl from the often underrated as well 33 and a Third album. I don't know why in the world this was not a single. It's so catchy and it's uplifting and it actually originated as a Beatles track from a rubber soul, I believe, or all thing and was brought back for all things must pass, but was not completed. But at number three, we have beautiful girl. At number two, we have the other hit single from all things must pass. What is life? Um, this song has actually been in some movies lately, which I think is really good. Um, um, I think it was in the movie Instant Family, which brought, which I wish brought more popularity to the song. And that song movie also had um, "Let Him In" by Paul and Wings, 
which I thought was great to see some solo Beatles songs in that movie. But nine, my number one pick. This is a really obscure track. It's a song from the Lethal Weapon 2 soundtrack and is really hard to get a hold of, and it's the song Cheer Down. You can only get that song on, um, what's it called? Um, the Best of Dark Horse Volume 2, which has been out of print since 1992, I believe. Um, and the Live in Japan, which is now recently out of print. Um, I'm hoping the Harrison Estate will reissue this eventually, but um, I have no idea. But that's my number one pick, Cheer Down. So, John, what are your three Ringo picks? Well, of course, uh, me being a big fan of Ringo Starr, uh, the number one is a uh, photograph that I really appreciate. And... Uh, Number two would be uh, It Don't Come Easy and Back Off Boogaloo. Great choices. Um, It Don't Come Easy and Back Off Boogaloo. Well, not Back Off Boogaloo, but It Don't Come Easy is was never on a proper Ringo album, so you have to get a blast from your past, which I don't know why they have, which I don't even think is in print anymore. So It Don't Come Easy is kind of hard to find nowadays on an actual album um photograph which Ger him and george co-wrote um photograph G him and george also co-wrote um i can't remember the writer for back off boogaloo right now but all great choices so my ringo choices starting off at number three we have the classic Ringo song, It Don't Come Easy, Overlapping, co-written with George. Um, I've always absolutely loved that song. At number two, I have the song I'm the Greatest, which him and John co-wrote, which is the only track that has three of the Beatles playing on it post-Beatles. Um, not counting Inkthology, but it's got... Um, John, George, and Ringo all playing. Paul was locked out of the country at that point. Um, but him and John co-wrote it, and John singing dual vocals with him on that track. And my number one is from the Time Takes Time album from 1992. And that would be the song, Way to the World. And if this was not released in 1992... This would have been a huge hit. I mean, massive hit if it was released in the 70s. Because this is a topic that I really want to get into someday is radio play. Um, if you don't have enough radio play for artists that are older, the record isn't getting promoted. You have to like go on tour. Like um, so many solo songs, Hope of Deliverance, this one. Dance Tonight, that was a modest hit, but, you know, all those songs would have been big hits if they were released in the 70s when the solo Beatles were big and in the early 80s. So those are our three picks. So we are going to go through the list again and give us a couple, two honorable mentions for each of the Beatles. So what are your honorable picks for John? Uh, they would be uh, Mind Games. And watching the wheels. Good picks, Mind Game being from the Mind Games album. Uh, and watching the wheels was one of the other hits for um, Double Fantasy. So great picks. Um, so my John picks would be Mind Games and the song Steel and Glass and Cold Turkey which Cold Turkey was a single released in 69 through the Plastic Ono Band when the Beatles were still together. They didn't want that put out under the Beatles, so John released it as Plastic Ono Band, and it's a really great rocker. It's about him trying to quit drugs and stuff because he was a heroin addict at that time. Um, but my number, But those are my two honorable mentions for sure. So go into your Paul honorable mentions. Uh, Live and Let Die, 
and uh, Junior's Farm. Great choices, obviously. Um, both non-album tracks, oddly. Um, Live and Let Die, obviously, being for the James Bond movie, and Junior's Farm being released as a single during the um, Venus and Mars period in 1974. That's... That would probably be my number one Wings song, actually. So, not surprisingly, just for me. Um, but my two Paul choices is I'm going to go with Young Boy from uh, the Flaming Pie album and um, a song from Paul's album from, 19, from 2013, the new album, I Would Pick Early Days. Um, about him and John being kids, you know, getting slicked back. And the thing is, is that he said, things may not always seem as they were. S Mark Lewis thinks that Paul may have been saying that to target him, but we're not completely sure on that. But I did hear that with Mark's tune-in book, which I have not yet read and is on my reading list for sure because i've heard wonderful things about that group book but definitely that for my two paul picks so what are your george picks john oh uh, they would be uh my sweet lord and rising sun wonderful picks my sweet lord being from a uh, brain well, um, living in uh, All Things Must Pass and um, Rising Sun being from the posthumous 2002 album Brainwashed, which is a really great kind of overlooked album these days. Um, my two other two songs would be um, Devil's Radio from Cloud Nine, great rocker, talking about the Devil's Radio, and um, Any Road from Brainwashed, which was a top 40 hit in England, I believe. So those are my two George picks. So what are your two other Ringo picks? Uh, my other two Ringo picks are King of the Broken Hearts and uh, Hey Baby great picks. Um, I both believe they are cover songs, but still wonderful picks. And um, Hey Baby was a modest hit for Ringo, kind of when he really dipped down with Ro Rotogravier. And I believe King of Broken Hearts was on Rotogravier as well. But great picks. So for Ringo, I actually picked some more recent songs. Um, one of them, which a Beatle is playing on. Um, it is a song from his 2010 album, Why Not? Um, that is a great album. I really love that album. It's from 2010, so it's 11 years old. And it's the duet with Paul McCartney, which is a wonderful, wonderful song, Walk With You. Um, just a perfect song, I think. Um, saying that he just walks with Paul McCartney in fame, basically. And from the uh, 2003 album. I'm not super familiar with this album. I'm only familiar with this song, really. And that is the song Never Without You, which is a tribute to George Harrison, which I think is a great song. So that is our three, three Ringo picks. And our picks for so our episodes. Um, so... First of all, one other quick announcement is that um, we are now available to listen on iHeartRadio, which is great. Things will not always be on iHeartRadio, but most files will be on iHeartRadio. So we are now on iHeartRadio and Podbean under I Know I Know Podcast. I will leave the links in the YouTube description below. Not all episodes will be on that but most of them primarily. So I want to thank you all for listening. Um, this is I Know I Know, a Beatles 
podcast talking about the four solo careers of the Beatles. And that this is your host, Hudson R., signing off. I'll do it. Yeah. And thank you, John Stanley, for guesting on the show. I hope to have you back on someday. Okay.